How would you like to get on fire for God? Seriously, like all the time, you're pleasing him. Like he's just like busting his buttons off his chest, so to speak, like that's so proud, swelling his chest over you. Wouldn't that be really wonderful if you were absolutely sizzling for Jesus Christ and for the Father? Um, I'd like to discuss that for a few minutes. And um, it's challenging. We have a world that's cold. We have many diversions and distractions that would like to help us compromise and to pull us away from the place that we need to be in God. I want to be like, and I think you do too, like Phinehas in the scripture. In, in Numbers chapter 25, I had a story about him. I'm not going to go on the story. I'm going to keep this a snippet here. But in verse 11, I love what God described him as. He's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. There's not much about him, but this is enough to just, oh, I want to be like Phinehas. And that is God himself describes about Phinehas saying, he, he's as zealous as I am. He has as much zeal as I have. That's just powerful. Now, obviously, infinite and finite are totally wide apart. You know, it's really different. But the quality, the 100% that God has in him, that same quality in 100% in his limited body and his limited power, and Phinehas was the same. He was 100% for God. Um, or how about, I love Apollo in the scripture. If you go to the book of Acts, and uh, Acts 18, near the end, it's a great story about that guy, just a little bit tucked in there. This guy was recognized, man. He was one of the heroes. Um, and all the heroes in the Bible, if you go through the scripture, why did they get in the Bible? You know, the people of God, how they get in there? Because they were fervent. They had a, a, a fervent vibrant desire, a hunger, a thirst after Jesus Christ. And Apollo, I love him, it says he being fervent in the spirit, you know, he's preaching and all. And he wasn't even preaching the exact thing. He didn't know anything but John's baptism. He didn't know Jesus yet. A couple of the disciples pulled him pulled aside, showed him a little bit more, and he went out. He had zeal and knowledge. Paul warned about zealous being zealous and having a zeal of God, but not knowledge. He warned that in Romans chapter 10 with the, uh, with the Jewish people. So you need both. You need like the spirit, and then you also need the word. Boy, you put those together. You're an invincible, conquering victor, a champion in Jesus Christ. I want to turn your attention just for a second to this great little tucked in scripture. Book of Romans, powerful book. Chapter 12, powerful chapter. Paul's exhorting them on what now practically to do to walk out their Christian life. And by the way, all the way up there, he has all this incredible it's layer by layer by layer, um, going up a mountain, building a, a beautiful structure on who God is and how we fell and, and all. And, and he's talking about like um, the great God who he is. Oh, the depth both of the knowledge and wisdom of God, his ways are past finding out, how unsearchable are his judgments, who has known the mind of the Lord, like that, 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 climax. Then he says, I beseech you, therefore, do this. And he starts naming them some things. I love this chapter. Read chapter 12 in Romans, start in verse nine and read, well, the whole thing is great, but you know, nine to 21. At one time I had this memorized. I don't have it memorized now. I know a lot of it, but I can't word for word all of it. It's so good though. But this little nugget here, Paul said, don't be slothful in business. This is in verse 11. Not slothful, not lazy. God can't stand laziness, by the way. He understands a little bit here and there, a period of rest or a little bit diversion or something. But a life of laziness is not pleasing to God. If you're just sitting around doing nothing, I'm telling you right now, I'm not trying to judge you, but the fact is he's not pleased with you. If you read the book of Proverbs and all those exhortations against laziness, mm -mm. God wants you working, God wants you fervent, God wants you laboring. And you can't get all the things that God has for you unless you get up and work for it, you know? Um, so it says, not slothful in business. Now here's the verse right here, fervent in spirit. Fervent inside, in spirit, serving the Lord. That word fervent, by the way, I looked it up and it's zeo, Z-E-O in the Greek. And it means to be hot. <laughs> so that's a good... A metaphor that we have when it talks about on fire for God is to be hot, boiling. That word means to boil. I looked it up in Webster's and it says burning. <laughs> so God wants you burning on fire. Now they didn't have electricity. They didn't discover that. 
at that time. So when it talks about heat and fire and all that, it's talking about candles. As Jesus said, you are the light of the world. They didn't have a light bulb or flashlight. It was fire. And think about the tongues of fire that came at Pentecost, uh, um, on the day of Pentecost, when the tongues of fire. Think about the Spirit of God and fire going together quite a bit. Think about when it says in Hebrews chapter 12, the very last verse, for our God is a consuming fire. So how do you get this fire? How do you get on fire fervent with God? I mean, there's certain things you need to do. There's obedience and faith and, and, and walking in Him and all that, not being lazy. <laughs> he says, first thing he said, don't be slothful in business fervent in spirit. Keep it up. How do you keep it up? How do you, how do you maintain it? How do you, get it? how do you get on fire for God? When you'd like to be that one that really is on fire for God, not for the effect of people looking at you, oh, he's different, although it'll happen, but really pleasing God, because that's what we need to do is please him and to be like him. He is fire. Ezekiel, by the way, describes God as waist up like fire and waist down like fire in his vision. So how do you do it? It's just a simple thing here. I love the simplicity in Christ. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, there's a simplicity in Christ. And it always comes back to the basics. The mature Christian lives out the basics, really lives it out. 101 Christianity is what we should really seek to get and keep it. You know, we don't have to go out through great revelations and all that, though he'll give them to you. But the fact is, it's living out the basics. And it comes down to always the same thing, prayer, the word of God, having both. By the way, any of these people that walked with God and were fervent with Him prayed. And I'll give you two, three, four instances of how prayer fills you with the Spirit. Um, think about Jesus when He got baptized. In, the, in Luke's Gospel, in chapter 3 at the end, it says, And as He was praying, the heaven opened and the Spirit of God came on Him. I think there's a key phrase there. I think that's why I put it in there. When Jesus was transfigured on probably Mount, Mount Tabor, you know, at the bottom of, of, of Galilee. Anyway, uh, as the Spirit of God came, uh, uh, I mean, as he got filled and we became like a human light bulb in front of Peter, James, and John. And all, uh, what was he doing when he was being transfigured, transformed? He was praying. Um, or how about the book of Acts? Like I mentioned, the fire coming on them. What were they doing when the Spirit of God came on them? You got it. They were praying. Pray, 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 pray. <laughs> That's a prayer. So it's giving yourself so that you become like, oh, I happen to see this before this teaching. Like you, you give yourself like they gave bulls in those days. Uh, there's different offerings. And one of them was a burnt offering. A burnt offering is they lit it on fire and they burnt it up. There's that word burning again. And they get in the, bur the This burnt offering was consumed. And I believe that offering, that sacrifice meant at that point that you're committing everything where it's nothing left. So if you wanna get on fire for God, if you wanna have a life that is sizzling hot <laughs> and wonderful before him and to be able to touch lives and, and help others, here's what you do. Simple as this, here's the simplicity. If you wanna get on fire, get in fire. If I were to go at night um, and set a big bonfire out there. Picture that burning bonfire. Um, to be able to get on fire, you got to get in it. <laughs> Don't do that physically, you know. But the fact is, and, and you'll get warm when you get closer, just like as you're praying, you get closer to God, your, your heart warms, you're not lukewarm anymore. God, Jesus said in Revelation 3, I'd rather have you hot or cold. He doesn't want you cold, but he doesn't definitely want you lukewarm. Lukewarm people think they're Christians, they're nominal Christians, and they're not pleasing him at all. He said, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I'd rather have you hot, really. If you're cold, you kind of know it. The world's people out there who really are living wrong and they're doing whatever, they know they're not right with God. So how do you get on fire? Get in it. How do you do that? Prayer. Just in reading the word and all. So come close to God. Get on fire for Jesus and maintain it. Stay in that lifestyle. And just come after him and just ask. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and a door will be open to you. And so just ask for the Holy Spirit to fill you. I, I think of uh, uh, Luke 11, also mentioned in Matthew's gospel, um, where it says, whatever we ask for, he's not going to give you fake or counterfeit and all. If you have a father, if you be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your father. How much will the, your, he give? the Holy Spirit to them that ask him in Luke. Uh, so um, 
just encourage you to uh, seek him and come close to him and get on fire. Life is exciting in that realm. It's never boring. It's never dull. It's never, you know, like depression leaves and coldness leaves and your heart is warmed all the time. All right. Well, I hope that helps. God bless you. Thanks for listening.